Welcome to our slash nuclear revenge. The story was written by Murger Uni. Our slash nuclear revenge is basically one step above pro revenge, meaning in these stories, people die. Anyways, I hope you enjoy it. And since the story gets really graphic at some point and has a TLDR in it, I'm going to put up three times a skip. A timestamp. It's probably on the screen right now. Click the timestamp if you want to skip the juicy bits. Enjoy the story. Alright everyone. This is a story passed down through the generations from my family. So while the title may seem rather extreme, this all happened a very, very long time ago. I was debating if this would fit here or somewhere else, though it should be fine here. It goes without saying this did not happen to me, but rather my great-great-grandfather, back when he was a child living in a semi-small town in Louisiana. Please keep in mind that the people in the town were very much racist, given the time and area, though they hated the mother far, far more than her child. The main characters in the story are as follows. Great-great-grandfather, GGF, GGF's father, GGGF, Demon Mother, DM, Adam, the victim, DM's other son, DMS, and the sheriff, TLDR, at the bottom. Be warned, I'm not going to spare any of the graphic details. I will be telling the story exactly as I have heard it. Keep in mind, this is all word of mouth. Personally, I have not yet been able to confirm the story, but family insists that this is what happened. Our story takes place in the 1880s in a very small town in eastern Louisiana. GGF and his family had moved from their native country of Spain to the Americas to flee inter-family conflict and had decided to settle with some other relatives. Within the small town, there was just a few families that had established themselves there one of which having been DM and her two children. DM had at one point in her life been a member of an extremely pronominal family in New Orleans. The woman actually being related to another famous murderer from the city, though distantly. From that GFF's family had been told. DM was a smart, though arrogant woman that had possessed an immeasurable amount of wealth though lost it after her family disowned her for conceiving a child through adultery in her marriage. She had been married to a prominent doctor in the city, but of which they had one child, DMS. Though when another child had been born, the husband had immediately called out adultery. DM's youngest son, Adam, had been born with caramel-colored skin, brown eyes, and whereas both of his parents had actual white skin and blue eyes, after intense questioning, DM had confessed to having an affair with a local farmer, a man that had been once a slave but freed after the Civil War. Her family immediately disowned her, her fortune stripped, and DM was about to be tossed out on the streets. But her mother had given her just enough money behind the family's back to allow DM to survive far away from the city, dead to the rest of her family except her uncle, the sheriff, and her mother. DM had taken her son's with her, and from GGF's first look, it was extremely clear how horrible Adam had been treated. Adam and GGF had gone to the same school, a small schoolhouse that also functioned as a church. With DMS on day on, GGF noticed DMS repeatedly smacking Adam on the back of the head, punching him in the gut, tripping him in the mud while away from the teacher's eyes. When GGF asked Adam about the abuse, he had simply gotten the answer, because I'm an n-word. GGF being an immigrant and not knowing the customs of the town had shrugged it off and returned to playing. Months passed and the abuse continued. Adam would show up to school with black eyes, swollen lips, bruises, etc. And no one would do anything about it as the entire matter was considered a family matter. Though even if someone had taken the initiative to confront DM about the abuse, she would meet them with the typical excuses of he gotten them while roughhousing or he fell. 
Monday, though, things changed so much that GGF and his family had gotten involved. Though GGF and Adam weren't good friends, they were the only two boys of age six at the time, so it was often that they would end up playing after school or during lunch. DMS did not like this one bit. DMS had come up to the two boys one day, and this is roughly the conversation that had taken place. Well, I didn't know we had a N-word lover here. What's your name, N-word lover? I don't know what that means, but I'm GGF. You must be Adam's older brother, right? DMS, leave us alone. We're trying to eat lunch. DMS had apparently thought it was a good idea to toss both boys' food on the ground at this point, deciding that he had a new plaything to bully. N-word and N-word lovers like you, you too don't deserve to eat on tables. Go eat your food out of the dirt. It's important to note that DMS was around 12 at the time, double the age of the boys, so fighting back wasn't an option. And even if it was, it would give Adam hell at home. My GGF started to cry over his food, and I had already gotten on the floor attempting to pick up his sandwich before DMS stomped on it. But rather than stomp on the sandwich, DMS had decided that it would be far more brutal to punch Adam in the back of the head while he was on his knees. After punching Adam, DMS punched GGF in the stomach before wandering off. Apparently the fact that DMS punched GGF in the gut was enough to piff off GGGF. As the next day, GGGF paid DM a visit to sort things out. When GGGF met DM at her house, this was actually the first time they had ever seen each other, as DM was essentially an introvert at this point, GGGF was met with a tattered, withered mess of a woman. DM had only been around 27 or 28 at this time, but it was extremely easy to pass her off as being in her late 30s. Her hair was a ragged blonde mess knotted and matted, as one would expect. Her face wore a permanent, withered scrawl of someone who had fallen from their absolute apex, doomed to fade out of their own existence like a withering weed. Her once elegant gown had become nothing more than a tattered mess used to cover her obese form. DM had never given GGGF any respect even from the beginning. The argument ensuing before the first word would be spoken. Why did you make me get out of my chair? Do you understand? I don't want guests. Or are you just stupid? GGGF trying to keep his composure. I'm sorry, man, but it seemed that our boys got into a little scuffle. Your boy DMS had punched my son and destroyed his lunch. Do you mind having a word with him? I won't be scolding my son for beating up trash like your brat. Fuck off! With that, DM had slammed the door. GGGF, feeling that it wasn't worth the effort to keep bothering the stubborn bitch, had decided that the best course of action was to simply teach his son how to fight. GGGF had taught GGF some dirty tricks to disarm DMS, though GGF uh, had never use of it. The next day, something odd happened. Adam was nowhere to be seen. And the next, and then the next. When the teacher had asked DMS where Adam was, DMS had said that he was very sick, though when she asked what his symptoms were, DMS kept contradicting himself. One more day passed before it happened. One of the stray dogs in the neighborhood had ended up with something peculiar in his greedy maw, and after one of the townsfolk pried it from the dog's maw, it was clear that it was a human rib. One small enough to be a child's. Dots were immediately connected. Though, due to the sheriff being the mother's uncle, the sheriff had decided that he would check on things himself. After a few hours, the sheriff reported to the townsfolk that Adam had just been buried the day prior after dying of some unknown disease. The dog having dug up the child's ribs somehow. No one bought it. Though, no one spoke in fear of any recoil an acquisition might have. GGGF, however, decided that he was going to take things into his own hands. He and three other men in the town had broken into DM's house that night, while her and her son were at the sheriff's office to discuss why she did not report the death right away. And what they found was... terrifying. 
I'm going to put a warning here. If you're easily offended or grossed out, just skip ahead. Also, this is not in the story. I'm probably going to put up a, a timestamp. All right, let's, let, let's read it. What they found was, in fact, Adam, though it was Adam in several pieces. In the basement of the house was where he was killed. The boy having been bisected at the waist, flayed, dismembered beyond the point of recognition, minus his caramel skin which had been sitting on a table in piles. His ribs had been plucked from his body, his organs nowhere to be found except a clump of entrails scattered across the room. His body had been absolutely defiled, and the assumption of his death was far from pleasant. And two of the men stormed back to the town to spread the news, as GGGF returned to his family to tell his son that he would never see Adam again. Justice, though, was very swift and brutal. Just above every person in town stormed the sheriff's office, and just about every person demanded justice. The sheriff insisted that his niece be given a fair trial while Diem had broken down crying. A hundred eyes sending unrelenting anger into a, her very soul at the outraged over the merciless crime she committed. In the middle of the chaos, DMS spoke up in a foolish attempt to protect his mother saying that the only way that they would get their lives back was if the kid was dead and because he ruined their lives. This foolish plea fell on deaf ears, only managing to fuel the rage of the mob as they stormed the room and grabbed all three of those inside. DMS, DM and the sheriff were given no mercy, the crowd grabbing all three and beating all three mercilessly. DMS, some were losing his life in the chaos. The remaining two were dragged to the top of the largest building and thrown off. Though, given it was only two floors, the crowd had continued to beat and eventually stabbed the two until the life left them. And that was it. The three were buried in unmarked graves, somewhere in the woods, while Adam's remains were buried in the local cemetery. And all four lives were destroyed over the greed of two people, both trying to recapture the life they once knew, through the most extreme method possible. While well, one man who could have avoided his death protected his family in a futile last resort. Okay, so you skipped until the TLDR, either because you wanted to skip the gory part, or, well, the story was just too long for you. Anyways, here's the TLDR. Horrible mother that abused her half-black son ended up killing her son in order to return to a higher standard of living. Her son, who had a part in the murder, and her uncle, who had protected her, all die at the hands of an angry mob. Another closing words of OP. Like I said at the beginning, this happened a very, very long time ago, and everyone in the story are now deceased. I never got to meet my GGF, obviously, but the story had been the collected accounts of the most tragic event that was witnessed by my family and the others in this town. If anyone manages to find any information about this story, please let me know, as I have been unable to validate the story myself, and I want to believe that my family did not make up this story as some sort of folklore. Thanks for reading, guys.